Hi there! In a few days, I'm heading to Germany with my dad to explore the Bavarian Forest National Park and I wanted to do a quick gear walkthrough before I pack everything. For context, we will stay there for 4 days and we will do photography as well as filmmaking and audio recording. So I will divide the gear in these three sections. In the end, I will also talk about other important gear that we will bring with us, for example crampons and clothing, because the weather forecast shows minus 15 degrees Celsius or 5 degrees Fahrenheit. Alright, let's go! Okay, let's start with cameras. If you've been following me for a while, then this section won't be anything new to you. I will be bringing my Nikon D500 and the Z6 which I'm using right now to film this video. These two cameras are a pretty good combination because I can use the Z6 for filming and the D500 for photography. The Z6 has a phase detection autofocus and better video capabilities, so it makes sense to use it for filming. And the D500 is much more capable at tracking fast moving subjects in less than ideal lightning conditions. I will also take my GoPro 11 as I use it to film the behind the scenes and do some vlogging for the YouTube channel. Ok, now on to lenses. I will bring the Sigma 150-600 Sport, Sigma 70-200 coupled with a 1.4x teleconverter, Nikon 24-70 and Sigma 14-24. The plan is to use the 150-600 and 70-200 for photographing and filming wildlife. And I will interchange these two, len these two lenses constantly because sometimes I want to get a wider, more of a wildlife in a landscape type of shot or the animal just gets too close and other times I need a more close-up photo or the animal is very far away. The Nikon 24-70 will come in handy for getting the landscape shots as well as filming ourselves. It's a great all-around lens and has a very good image stabilization. The last lens that we will bring with us is the 14-24. You haven't seen me use this lens on my YouTube channel very often, that's because it's more of a specialty lens with its wide angle of uh, view and so it doesn't come in handy as often. But that doesn't mean I don't like it, it's a very high quality lens and I use it for capturing the landscapes, stars and time lapses. If you watch my Alpine Ibex video, you will notice in the beginning there is a sunrise time lapse in the mountains that was shot with this lens. Before I start talking about the audio equipment, I will just quickly show you which tripods I will be bringing with me. For video recording, I will be using this Manfrotto video tripod with Nitrotech N8 video fluid head. And for added stability, I will be using this Camvate base plate with lens support to further reduce the shaking. And the second camera will be mounted on this Triopo tripod with Triopo gimbal head. The third tripod that I'm bringing is the Sirui Carbon Fiber Travel Tripod. One thing I always do before going on a trip like this is to clean all my camera equipment. It's a task no one is really excited to be doing, but it's a must if you don't want to have unwanted spots of dust on your lenses or camera sensor. I've neglected cleaning a few times before, for example when I was shooting deer in the mating season or when I was in Scotland a few years ago. And it's really frustrating to come home and find out that you had a spot on your sensor. It's fairly easy to remove that from the picture, but it becomes much harder, if not impossible, to remove it from the video footage. For cleaning all my camera equipment, I've been using products from the company VSGO for quite some time now. Our local camera store sells their sensor cleaning swaps and I've been satisfied with their quality. Now VSGO has reached out to me to sponsor this video and sent me their outdoor cleaning kit, so I can show you guys how I clean and prepare my equipment for a photography trip. In the first step, I always use an air blower to remove the dust from the camera body as well as the lens. I clean the body because I don't want any dust to gather around the camera mount as it can fall onto the sensor when I change lenses. and I blow off the dust from the lenses uh, before I use the cloth and the lens cleaning solution 
because I don't want to scratch the surface with small particles that might stay on it. For any harder to clean parts, I use the lens pen, but this time it's not really necessary. I also use the pen when I have to clean the viewfinder, as dust can accumulate there. Now it's time to clean the sensor. I am not an expert in doing this, I just learned by watching a YouTube video. If you're not comfortable doing this yourself, you can always find someone in your area who offers camera sensor cleaning as a service. You can also ask at your local camera store, often they offer cleaning as well. And lastly, I will clean the front glass of one of the lenses, just to show you. I will repeat the process for all other lenses later, but I don't want to bore you with it. When cleaning the front glass element, I always begin in the center of the surface and work my way out in a circular motion, gradually moving the cloth towards the edge. Cool, it's clean. And that's it. I want to thank the VSGO again for sending me these products to test and show you guys. Like I said, I've been using their sensor cleaning product for a few years now, and this outdoor cleaning kit seems equally well made. And it even comes in this small pouch, so you can have all your stuff in one place and always with you. I will continue using their products, and if you're interested in buying one for yourself, I will leave the link in the description. Let's move on to the audio equipment. I will need the audio gear for two main purposes. Firstly, to record any sounds that the animals might make. For this, I will use one of the two uh, shotgun microphones that I own. The Sennheiser MKE 600 or the Audio Technica. The difference between these two microphones is that the Sennheiser has less rejection of the sounds coming from the sides and the back but has a stronger signal and is more sensitive to the sounds. No matter the specs, the sounds coming from these two microphones will only be usable if there won't be too many people standing around us. The sounds that the animals make are, generally speaking, pretty quiet. And because they are coming from further away, they appear even quieter relative to the sounds that are coming from right beside you, for example, a person talking. I will plug these two shotgun microphones into the Zoom F3 recorder that I've shown you many times before. And I will also bring the Zoom H8 recorder. The second use of the audio equipment is for recording the ambience. I go on and on about this, I know, but to me, a high quality immersive stereo recording of the ambience is a top priority. In all my wildlife films, as well as YouTube videos, I use the ambience recording as a background for the footage that I capture. I believe that it sets the scene and adds a deeper connection to the footage because we as humans naturally rely on sounds to experience the world around us. And when we are in nature, our hearing senses become even more stimulated. That's I always go at great lengths to capture a pristine ambience of the locations where I film. For this, I use the Audio Technica BP4025 stereo microphone or a pair of clippy microphones. Between these two, the Audio Technica is a more higher end, more high quality choice, but it takes much more space and time to set up. But in return, it delivers a very high quality, clean and immersive sound. I use a pair of clippy microphones, mostly for the three ears technique. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go check out the How Can You Find Owls with this setup video that I have on my channel, or the Scotland part one video, where I show you how I use them and the results that I get. 
whenever I'm using the higher end Audio Technica or a pair of Clippy microphones, I always pair them with Zoom F3 recorder or Zoom H8 recorder. And lastly, these small three items are used to boost the signal and are placed in between the microphone and the audio recorder. Alright, that was a really long section, but I think we covered everything. Lastly, I want to talk about the clothing, because at least for me, it's not every day that I have to stay outside in the freezing weather, sitting in one spot for hours and barely moving. As a first layer, I will use this thermal underwear and a pair of thin socks. Then these warm underpants and a long sleeved t-shirt and another pair of woolen socks. And the top layer are these new pants that I got. They are camouflage, waterproof, extremely warm, they have padded knees and they are very silent. They don't make any noise when I walk. And of course, lastly, the insulated winter jacket. This jacket is extremely warm and what I love the most about it is that it has giant pockets so I can keep all my batteries in there and keep them warm so they don't die in the winter. Finally, there is a ski mask, gloves, and a beanie. Another very important piece of equipment are the crampons. I use them very often in the winter because it's not unusual that I walk off the beaten path and if it's slippery or there is ice, they prevent me from falling. And well, it's bad if you fall, but it's terrible if you fall with camera in your hands. Okay, that's all the important pieces of the equipment. Now I will pack everything and be ready to go. If you wish, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel because I will soon post the first video from the Bavarian forest. Also, go check out the VSGO cleaning products if you need them to clean your camera equipment. The link will be in the description. Until then, thank you so much for watching and see you next time.